the clove hitch. Hello everybody, welcome back and for today's little knot, nice little knot this one, is the clove hitch and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you I think three different ways of actually tying this knot. I will show you one way on the ring, another way on a bar like so, I'll also show you how to do the slip method so as you can see this one is slipped and just by pulling it like so it comes undone easily and then I'll show you also how to tie this knot on the bite. So without further ado, let's get knotting. I also forgot to say in my introduction that I'll just read you a little passage from a book by Geoffrey Budworth and in it here it says the clove hitch, a fast easy way to secure a line to a stanchion or spar, often used to hang fenders over the side. It is not completely secure and will loosen if the standing part is jiggled. A re more reliable knot for fender is a round turn and two half hitches, but ask the skipper first. So in other words, if it's your boat, your ship, you tie whatever you kn knots you want. But if you're working on someone else's ship or someone else is in charge of a situation, always ask them what knots they prefer for certain tasks. So anyway, this time, let's get on and start knotting. Right, so the first method I'm going to show you on tying the clove hitch is by tying it using the working end over a horizontal bar that we don't have access to either end on. And so what we do is the following. We take our working end and we pass our working end over the bar like so. Now pull enough through because you, you want a little bit to work with. And so that is my standing end and this one in my right hand is my working end. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pass it over the bar for a second time. But as I pass it over the bar for the second time, I'm going to allow it to cross over my original one like so. So as you can see, it's gone round again and it's passing over my standing end like so. And then the next thing I do is get hold of the working end and I make sure that it runs parallel to my standing end and goes underneath that loop there. So just lift it slightly with your fingers so it goes underneath like so and then pull up on that nice and tight. And then as I pull up on that nice and tight, that is now locked in position. And this knot is secure so long as you have got tension on one end of the line. But however, if the tension is allowed to jiggle, and that was only a quick jiggle and even that shocked me, this knot can come undone very, very simply. However, there is no, and but the other th beautiful thing about this knot is that we can adjust the length of the line by feeding in one end and pulling on another end. And so now I have got far more of a working end at this point here. And if I want to, just feed in a bit more, feed it in, pull it through like so, keep feeding. And now I have got even more there. If I wanted to, I could either tie a half hitch here like so just to make it that little bit more secure so that even if it jiggles here it's not going to come undone or I can take it round itself here and just tie another half hitch at that point there if I wanted to make it even more secure. A little bit messy but there you go we've got another half hitch there. I'm not sure that that would be a true seamanship like thing to do but it's just, an, just a way of securing it because it is a great knot. This knot, when tied around an object, makes that object easy to lift. Providing there's weight on it, you can easily lift that object and people use it in the trade to lift tools um, and things like that. So anyway, that is tying it on a bar like so. Let's show you now the slipped method of tying it. So I'll just take that, in fact, let's keep that on for a second. Let's just put that one on. There we go, we'll move that to one side and then you'll be able to see the difference. And now if I get myself another piece of rope here, and you can see here, this is my working end in my right hand. And what I'm going to do is just pass it over my horizontal stanchion like so, 
bring it and I want to pass them a little bit more through because I need a bit more for this one. I then take the working end, bring it round the stanchion again, but as I bring it round the stanchion, I allow it to cross over my standing end like so. And so in the last one, we took the working end and we ran it parallel to my standing end there. But what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to actually form a bite in my rope here like so. So there you go. See, I've formed a bite and I'm going to pass the bite this time underneath and then pull up tight. And you can now see that I still have a clove hitch here. And if I pull it up all nice and tight, that is nice and held in place. So let's just see. You can see the end there. There's my loop. And so now, if say, for example, this one is really, really secure. So as I pull on that, it's not allowing itself to be freed. But for a quick release version, all I do is just pull on here like so. And you can see here just a gentle pull and it has come undone. And so that is how you tie the clove hitch onto a horizontal bar where you don't have access to either end using the working end itself. So let me just show you one more time. So one more time, I pass the working end over my bar like so. I then bring a bit through. I then pass the working end over again, but it's crossing over my standing end like so. Bring it up and then this now, this working end runs parallel with my standing end underneath that there and then pull it up tight and there we go we now have two clove hitches side by side a pair okay and so let's get on and tie the next one right so the next method of tying our clove hitches I can actually tie the clove hitch in the bite of a rope so if I don't have access to either end I can tie it in the bite of a rope and to be honest, that is so simple and easy. The first thing I do is get hold of both ends like so, and I twist it so that the left-hand side passes over the right-hand side to form a loop like so. And I'll just keep that held in position there. And then what I do is I create another loop. So I take the left-hand side and pass it over the right-hand side again like so, allow that loop to form, and there we go. We have now got two loops side by side to each other. The next thing I do is I pass the right hand loop over the left hand loop like so. And we have now in effect created our clove hitch. So if say for example we have a stanchion where we have access to the top of it like on this one here. Now that I've tied those, I've put those two loops together and we've created the clove hitch, all I need to do is pass that loop over my stanchion like so, pull up on it, and there you go. And if I pull up on it really tight, I have got myself a nice clove hitch attached to that stanchion there. And what we could do, if say for example, we've got a picket fence, say for example, that is one post of a picket fence and we've got another post here, all we do is exactly the same again is we tie, we took, put one turn like so, another turn like so, pass the right hand over the left hand one there, and we can now pass that over another post. So in other words, we are creating a little barrier or something like that to stop people. I've seen this used at fairgrounds, and they've basically tied this around posts to stop people crossing certain points of fairgrounds and things like that. And so therefore, you can tie as many as you want um, in the bite of your rope. So that is another method of tying the clove hitch. So here we have now the final method of tying the clove hitch is if we want to tie the clove hitch onto a ring. And so what I do is I get my working end here and I pass it up through my ring like so. Take a little bit through because we want a little bit on there. And so my working end is now passing along underneath my ring and then up through the ring like so. Then the next thing I do is take my working end and I bring it around here like so. Pass it underneath my standing end. And then when I've passed it underneath my standing end 
like so. So you can see there, it's going up through the ring, round, out of the ring again, underneath the standing end of the rope here. I then bring it up through the ring again, like so. So it's going up through the ring. And then what I finally do is I then pass that through that point there. So just let me pass it through and then get my chubby little fingers out of the way and you'll see it. And you can see now it's coming up down through that loop there. And then as I pull up tightly on that, pull up on all your strands. And now that is the clove hitch on a ring and that's locked in place. Now, if you wanted to make it more permanent, you could if you wanted to, I haven't got enough length here, but you could if you wanted to is tie a half hitch here, tie a half hitch there and that will just keep it more secure. Or the other alternative is you could actually seize those two together, seize them together at this point here and that will keep that locked into place on your ring. And once again, if you're tying it around a post or something like that, you could also, if you want to, put a half hitch in there for additional security like so. But once that, once the knot is in there on a, and you've tied it around, say for example, a tool or something like that, providing you've got weight on here, that is not coming undone. But as soon as any little bit of jiggling happens, that knot can come undone. So it's always best to secure it, say, with another half hitch or something like that. So anyway, that is tying the clove hitch. That's what I've learned today. And so if you enjoyed it, thumbs up. If you hated it, thumbs down. But please do comment, leave me a message, and especially do leave me messages as to how and when you use the clove hitch. So once again, thanks for watching and please share this video. Bye bye.